Okay, we're going to talk about some types of reactions. There are certain patterns that come up quite frequently in uh, looking at chemical reactions. And if you can spot these patterns, sometimes that gives you an insight into how to balance it or how to understand what's going on in the reaction. And there are some basic types of chemical reactions. And the first one we're going to talk about is something called a combination reaction. So let's look at an example of a combination reaction. We've seen this one a couple of times in previous presentations. Uh, magnesium being put together with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. So in combination reactions, I usually have uh, two substances separated from one another and they end up pressed together in a new compound. So I've combined magnesium with oxygen and ended up with magnesium oxide. The opposite of a combination reaction generally is a decomposition reaction. So what I'm going to see in a decomposition reaction is I have one or more substances on the reactant side and that ends up falling apart into uh, more substances on the product side. So if I see a few things on the reactant side and a whole lot on the product side, I know that I'm probably dealing with a decomposition reaction. So in this one, I've got potassium chlorate is uh, decomposing into potassium chloride and oxygen. Double replacement, I call these my soap opera reactions. So uh, basically I've got sodium came to the dance with carbonate, iron came to the dance with nitrate, and when the dance was over, iron left with carbonate and sodium left with nitrate. So the two metals have traded partners in this. Another one of the soap opera reactions is the single replacement. And in a single replacement reaction, I've got sodium came to the dance with nitrate, copper came alone. Uh, copper ends up stealing nitrate from silver and then silver leaves alone. So if I see a pattern where something comes by itself and then uh, another substance is by itself, I'm suspicious that I have a single replacement reaction going on. Combustion reactions, and we've uh, had a couple of those. So when I have a uh, compound of carbon and hydrogen primarily reacting with excess oxygen, I expect to get carbon dioxide and water uh, as products. One other thing we can look for in our reactions is whether they are oxidation reduction reactions. And a mnemonic device that can be used to remember oxidation and reduction reactions goes like this, uh, basically oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. So let's take a look at a simple reaction. I've got magnesium and oxygen getting together to form magnesium oxide. And what we need to do uh, to figure this out is to uh, assign charges to everything on the reactant and product side. So one thing to keep in mind is any element that's by itself, even if it is something like oxygen that uh, has two atoms, uh, if it's the way we would find it in nature, it's going to have zero charge. Compounds on the other high end are a little bit uh, more difficult to figure out, but generally anything from the a groups on the periodic table, or what I refer to as the A groups, the first two groups and then the last six, generally will uh, reflect charges according to their position, so gaining or losing electrons to achieve noble gas electron configurations. Unless we find them uh, in a polyatomic ion uh, with oxygen primarily, the oxygen will dictate uh, the charge because it will keep a negative two charge so in nitrate, uh, in order for this to balance out, the nitrogen must have a positive five charge because I've got three oxygens for minus two plus a po positive five uh, leaves me with a negative one overall charge, which is what I see on nitrate. Transition metals, we generally have to work backwards and find out what they're paired up with uh, to deduce what the charge is. Hydrogen is almost always going to be plus one, but occasionally you might bump into it uh, paired up with a metal as a hydride, and in that case, it's actually going to have a negative one charge. So uh, I'm going to assign magnesium a zero charge because it's an element all by itself. Oxygen also will get a zero. 
when I go to the product side, I've got an ionic compound, a simple binary ionic compound. Magnesium is out of the plus two char or plus two column. Oxygen is out of the minus two column. Their charges balance. So those should be accurate charges for magnesium and oxide in an a binary ionic compound. Okay, so we have to see what's changing. And what I usually do is I draw some lines connecting each element and their charges. So oxygen, I have a line going from its zero charge to the plus two charge. Oxygen, I've got it going from zero to minus two. And we have to think about what's going on here. Anytime something becomes positive, we're actually losing electrons. So in this case, magnesium is losing electrons. And when I look at oxygen, it's going from zero to minus two. Anything that acquires a negative charge has gained electrons. So oxygen has gained electrons. So when I'm describing this, uh, the magnesium becomes oxidized and the oxygen is reduced. And you probably would have known that the magnesium was oxidized just because uh, many times oxidation uh, goes along with uh, an increase in the proportion of oxygen in a molecule. So magnesium had zero oxygens to begin with and then all of a sudden it's paired up with oxygen so it's become magnesium oxide. Okay, so basically restating all of that. <laughs> Okay, so we can look through our basic reaction type. So for my uh, decomposition, in the previous one I had a combination reaction. Uh, and in combination reactions, I would say uh, better than 75% of combination reactions are going to be uh, redox reactions. Decomposition reactions, likewise, I'd say uh, a good 75% of them or better are going to be redox reactions as well. So let's check this out. And the way to check this out is to assign charges. So let's see, potassium I can assign a plus one charge right away, but chlorine uh, and oxygen are together here, so I have to assign oxygen a minus two charge. That would leave chlorine with a plus five charge to get this all balanced out. And on the product side, it's pretty easy. Potassium and chloride, it's a binary compound, so I can pick their charges off of a periodic table, and then oxygen is an element all by itself, so zero. And then if I look what's going on, potassium's not changing charge, but look at chlorine. It's going from plus five to minus one. It's gaining electrons, uh, a whole lot of electrons, six electrons uh, gained. So chlorine is being reduced, and then oxygen is going from a minus two to a zero. So that means that it's losing electrons to reach that zero charge. So it's being uh, re uh, oxidized. <laughs> okay, so that kind of proved my theory that uh, at least that one is, is a, a redox reaction or oxidation reduction reaction. Uh, double replacement, I would say that uh, probably 75% or better of these are not redox reactions, but again, the only way to figure this out is to uh, assign charges. And, oops, there's a redox on that one. Uh, because the polyatomic ions don't change their proportions of oxygens, I can treat those collectively. So the sodiums have plus one, carbonate has a minus two, iron has a plus three, nitrate a minus one, and then the charges all stay the same on the product side. So if there's no change in charge for any of the atoms, then uh, it is not a redox. Let's look at the single replacement. Uh, I've got some obvious elements in there. I've got copper and silver. I can assign zero charge to them. And then they're present in ionic compounds on opposite sides of the equation. So I'm suspecting that uh, uh, both copper and silver will have positive charges uh, on uh, the sides where they are combined with other elements. So let's take a look at this. So silver would have a plus one charge because I know that nitrate has a minus one charge. And like I said, copper and silver both have zero charge. And then on the product side, since I know nitrate ion has a minus one charge and there's two of them, the copper has a plus two charge. So let's look at what's going on. Silver is going from plus one to zero. The only way to do that is to gain electrons. Gaining electrons is reduction, so silver ion is reduced to silver. And copper, it's going from zero to plus two. The only way to do that is to lose electrons, so copper is losing electrons or being oxidized. And then lastly, 
it's kind of hard to assign charges to some of these compounds, particularly the, the butane, the C4H10. So let's just kind of look at this from a standpoint. Uh, carbon and hydrogen are not combined with oxygen on the reactant side. They're reacted with oxygen, but uh, in the molecule butane, carbon and hydrogen stand alone. Uh, and then on the product side, both carbon and oxygen are combined with oxygen. Carbon and hydrogen are combined with oxygen, but not with each other. So their proportion of oxygen has increased, so that would mean that it's an oxidation. And then if I simply look at oxygen as an element on the reactant side, it's got zero charge. And then in a compound, if I uh, found it uh, correctly, it would be minus two. Hydrogen, I normally assign a plus two, so that works out. So um, oxygen is going from a zero to a minus two, and that's gaining electrons, so that has to be reduction. So it is a reduction.